Yeah, shall we start the session, sir? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, very good afternoon, all. Uh, I am very much happy to welcome you all for a webinar session on uh, pre-engineered building, uh, presented by Mr. Gautam Mateshwaran, a senior sales engineer uh, in a technical department, Neymar Building System, Sharjah, UAE. I would like to thank the management principal, a dean and the head of the department for the opportunity to conduct this program. Uh, most of you all know the Department of Civil Engineering, Sri Vengadeshwara uh, College of Engineering, is showing uh, more interest in organizing many programs like guest lecture, webinar, national as well as uh, international level, for the benefit of uh, student as well as uh, as well as faculty members. We are focusing to arrange resource person from the industrial background to develop good industry institute interaction and also uh, mainly to give a uh, industrial exposure to the student community. Uh, especially for this webinar, we have received more registration from uh, faculty, research scholar and students from different state of India. On behalf of the Department of Civil Engineering, Sri Vengadeshwara College of Engineering, I warmly welcome the participants from different streams and location for this webinar. Uh, before getting into the session, I would like to highlight the profile of the today's speaker, Mr. Gautam uh, Mateshwaran. He completed his uh, undergraduate in a Bachelor of Civil Engineering from Kungu Engineering College, Anna University, India, in the era of 2010. During his graduation, he got many achievements in co-curricular as well as extracurricular activities without compromising his academics. He completed his degree with a first class distinction and one among the university topper. Uh, through the placement drive, he got an offer uh, to work in uh, Mobani Steel LLC UAE. From August 2010 to August 2011, he worked in Mobani Steel LLC UAE as a design and estimating engineer. During his tenure there, he carried out engineering design and specification and cost estimate for many clients uh, and contractors. Then he got an opportunity to work in Neymar Building System, Sharjah, UAE, as a senior sales engineer in a technical department from August 2011 to till date. So based on his experience, he expertise in the following handling responsibilities of estimating the cost of production as well as defining the profit, profitability objectives. Preparing, presenting and explaining the cost estimation to the clients effectively. Preparing technical discussion during a post uh, tender stage. Analyzing, approving subcontracts capabilities and their uh, quality plans. Then preparing variation orders and it approved from clients and consultants. And also the main thing, he coordinated the technical meeting in between the clients and the consultants. Uh, I, I have introduced uh, uh, briefly about uh, Gautam Mateshwaran. Still, uh, he, he has more achievements apart from uh, his uh, working experience. So with this, I hand over the session to the Gautam uh, Mateshwaran. Sir, you can carry on your presentation, sir. Thank you. Um, Dr. Uh, Professor Harishagan, thanks for the kind introduction and um, distinguished uh, professors, um, esteemed faculty members, students, friends, uh, good afternoon to everybody. And I'm extremely happy and um, proud and humbled to be here to address you all in this webinar session to share what uh, little I know about this pre engineering steel buildings. So um, let us uh, go directly into the session. And uh, for any questions or anything, you can ask at any time, or we can also discuss um, at the end of the uh, session. So uh, let's uh, go into the PowerPoint presentations. OK, first, um, I would like to explain about, uh, first of all, what is mean by PEB. Because the general, um, in general aspects uh, of today's contemporary world, uh, the term PEB is widely used, um, rather than you know uh, mentioning pre-engineered steel buildings. So first, let us see uh, what is PEB and how um, and where the PEB has originated from. 
so first of all the pb uh, it it got originated from the united united states of america back in the uh, 90s 1940s so uh, pb concept it has been developed after the uh, world war 2 as as everybody knows uh, the us went into a war with the nazi germany during the world war 2 so once the war got over um, there has been a huge demand um, to increase the economical growth of uh, the country so uh, only during at, at that particular stage this metal buildings concept or peb concept as everybody say has been developed so because it it has been widely regarded as a fast economic growth and uh, which gives a, a quick solution in order to increase the you know the increase the currency value or to increase the uh, the rapid uh, production um, growth and company um, companies in the united states so uh, it is it is initially during the initial stage of the pre engineered steel buildings it is there is no like um, customized options were available so many of the investors or many of the production companies who want to establish the uh, yeah, factory or warehouses or a, a workshop or those kind of requirements they uh, uh, saw this pb as a you know a, a one stop solution for, uh, in order to quickly establish their uh, investment as well as their production capabilities so uh, they went into uh, their market and they saw pb as a ready made solution see uh, at, at this particular time the peb was like um, mainly like uh, available in pre customized sizes like 20 meter by 30 meter 30 by 50 meter like you cannot customize the building so once what what you do is just go into the market just take this customized buildings just take the material to the side just bolt it with with the bolts and nuts assemble the rafter that's it put the cladding outside that's it your building is ready your building is fit to go it is more like going into a ikea um, uh, shop and buy any uh, materials for like wooden furniture or anything just bring it home and you have the installation manual just screw it around and finish it that's it so it, this has led to a, a huge demand and increase in the uh, like it has gained popularity you know in 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 like in, in within no time so this has led to a rapid construction and uh, rather than compromising on the aesthetics and also it has been quite cheaper at that time so suddenly everybody started asking about peb buildings so only after that time in the from the 1940s till the 1960s the peb has become more popular so only after the 1960s where the computers you know start originated they uh, have started bringing the concept of computerized design means like which we call it as a prefabricated or customized designs like uh, every client has their own project requirements depends upon the lands or depends upon uh, depends upon their investment capabilities so the client started looking for um, options or customized design for the uh, pre engineered steel buildings so which is which has uh, gave birth the name called pre engineered building so let us see what does it pre engineered building look like and what does it comprise of it primarily uh, you can categorize the pb building into three uh, primary aspects one is called as primary steel members um, and second one is the secondary steel members and third one are the cladding which used to cover the roof as well as the wall as you could see in this picture you can able to see the primary steel members which are primarily the main structural members the rafters which is at the top and the uh, bottom uh, which are the columns so pb usually are uh, usually are made up of uh, welding the i sections not welding the i section the plates are being welded together in order to form the i section so it is like you have these two plates and you have another plate which is called web weld it together to form the i section which will be used as a primary steel member which are primarily used in the columns as well as the rafter so what are secondary members secondary members are the members which are used at the above the rafter as you could see these are the uh, secondary members and at walls these members are used to uh, support the cladding works at the top as well as at the wall the members if you use these members at the roof those are called as purlins if you use the same members at walls those are called as girts even though the profile size shape everything remains the same so this is called as a main, main primary members and secondary steel members so let us go to 
how does it the primary steel members look how does its secondary members look and what are all the other components that are present in the peb building so uh, this is the typical column and typical rafter i'm going to explain uh, in detail later about the stepper section of uh, column as well as the rafter okay and these are the secondary members secondary steel members as you could see in the picture those are like primarily is at section the profile is profile and shape of the sections are like is at or c sections these are the roof and wall cladding which will be used to cover uh, the roof at uh, the walls so these are like cold formed or cold rolled uh, coils which will be formed which will be formed as a um, perforated and or you can call as uh, profile panels and these are the connection bolts which is used to connect the rafters and columns together again i'm going to explain to you in detail later in later part of the slides about this connection bolts and arrangements and these are the anchor bolts again i will explain to you more about this anchor bolts where the anchor bolts are coming how does it anchor bolt or where the anchor bolts are getting used at okay so these so these this in this very particular picture you can see an i section and at the bottom of the i section you can see a base plate and again beneath the base plate you could see the anchor bolt so um how do you ensure the structure is stable how how and where do you connect the uh, pre engineered steel building so every part of the column comes with a base plate okay and this base and the and, and the base plate will be secured to the footing or the foundation by means of anchor bolts so these are the primary uh, uh, element which is connecting the substructure to the superstructure so okay so anchor bolt is one of the main and salient elements of a pre engineered steel building so these are called as splices okay now i have like 30 meter 40 meter building how do i connect the rafters or different pieces of rafter together this is called a butt plate or in other words it is called as a splice so what uh, usually the size of the plate is bigger than the size of the rafter which will hold it together means it will hold the two uh, members or two different pieces of rafter together and bolt it down by means of connection bolts as you could see on the top and the bottom there are stiffeners which are used in the design in order to carry out the uh, member stress designs and everything so this is the uh, primary typical uh, picture of uh, i section the top is called as top flange and the bottom plate is called as a bottom flange which is integrated together by web which is called as web plate so when you weld it all this together it is called as an i section you you have like a demed i section which is primarily procured in the mills which are called as hot wall sections and this is called as i built up sections because you are building up the plates and you are forming an i section so which is why it is called as built up sections so these are the purlins as you could see the purlins will be arranged in the longitudinal direction which is which is perpendicular to the direction of the frame your frame is called as once you assemble the uh, two rafters together connected to the either end of the column it will form as an uh, a frame it's, a, it's it's called a typical frame so in the opposite direction of the frame or in, in other words perpendicular to the direction of the frame the purlins will be coming again i will be explain to you more in detail about this complete uh, you know elements or the members of pre engineered steel building okay so this is called as a universal components of your peb building this particular picture the 3d picture this explains about all components and important elements of complete pre engineered steel buildings as you could see uh, the roof cladding is at the top and the wall cladding is the wall side you also have an option of putting partial block walls and partial steel cladding and you also have mezzanine inside the building mezzanine we will look into detail later about how the ventilators and then uh, the fascias roof monitor these are like various components of pb building which will be decided by the client depends on upon the end use of the building suppose if i am procuring a factory uh, like a steel factory where excess amount of heat and air will be generated how do you take out the excess air which is generated inside the building this this is where this which ventilators and all this um, power ventilator comes up as soon as you put this elements at the top this will be able to extract the heat generated inside the building and this will help to you know minimize the uh, temperature and uh, normal uh, air uh, regulations inside the building okay so okay so the, uh, this is one of the uh, million dollar question 
So uh, let me explain to you what is the basic differences between steel and concrete. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the quality. So since I am into a PEB building and uh, I'm leaning more towards the steel, but anyway, I'm going to explain to you about the main comparison between steel and concrete. So first of all, let's start, let's uh, see about the fabrication. Steel, it is easy, it's reliable, it's easy to handle, and it is much more like you can control the erection on the fabrication very easily. So fabrication is like much more like a straightforward work. Once, as soon as you finish the design of the steel, everything will uh, the design work and it will start cutting the materials accordingly. So it is more like a shock control the quality of the fabrication. So the chances of errors or the, uh, the chances of um, complexities are quite limited in the steel. But as you know, concrete is quite uh, different and it needs, it's, it totally depends upon the site condition. So, may, uh, so when you primarily compare both steel and concrete in this aspect, this is always difficult uh, to, um, uh, to ensure the quality of the steel and sorry, the quality of the material. So the material specification. So uh, when you when you take the steel, it's it's uh, the material specifications primarily categorized into two types. One is the low grade steel or high grade steel. So again, it it all comes to the uh, project requirements and the client requirement. So I will sometimes they say that okay, I, I it's a normal warehouse building. I'm just going to need uh, need it for storage. So I don't need like a very high grade steel. So it's it's very simple. You go to the market, pick your low grade steel, design your warehouse according to the uh, the material specification. So it is like precise and fixed. So you don't have to go here and there looking for different grades or different ideas, which is eventually going to confuse the client. But in concrete, it's it's like there is like holds a lot of grades and specifications available, which is sometimes you know too much of an option is is quite difficult to pick uh, choose from. Okay, so which is why the steel holds the upper hand here. So dimensions again, dimensions as I said in the fabrication thing, dimensions are uh, uh, quite accurate in the steel. While concrete, you know, there is always going to be you know, chances of errors. So again, minimizing the error in concrete is quite difficult, but in steel, you can easily, you know, avoid. So conventionally speaking, steel is always going to be 30 to 40% cheaper than the conventional concrete building. Okay, so the capacity. Gautam sir, we can't hear your voice. There is some interruption is there. Gautam sir, can you hear me? Dear uh, participant, sorry for the interruption. I uh, I privately communicate him and uh, let me come back here. Sorry for the inconvenience. So Gautam sir, Gautam sir, can you hear me? Gautam sir.
Gautam sir, we can't be able to hear your voice. Dear participant, he faced a small technical issue. Uh, he will be back in a, within a minute. Uh, um, Professor Harris, can you able to hear me? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, sir. I'm hearing, sir. Yeah, sorry for the. Uh, I think there have been technical stand. Sorry about this. No problem. No problem. Carry on, sir. Okay. Okay. So let's um, um, resume where we uh, left off. So it's about the concrete. Okay, uh, concrete versus steel. So economy. So when you talk about the, the economy, so which is the main uh, deciding factor when it comes to what type of building you are going to choose it, what type of building you are going to choose. Just a minute, let me go into the. Okay. So um, I was talking about the foundation. And erection. Okay, so uh, like I was saying, erection a yeah, 30 by 40 meter building can be uh, finished within like no time in a span of 10 days. It's uh, yeah, people of like 10 to 12 manpower with a supervisor. You can able to finish off the steel insulation in no time. But in concrete, it is slower and needs like a lot of coordinations between the contractor and the uh, site people. And again, you have to wait for the all the curing and all this all these things. So efficiency and suitability. So now and uh, the clear spans. So what happens with steel is uh, when the building gets too wide, it's 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 uh, much much better to go with the steel buildings. Um, in steel building, a span of 90 meter clear span without any intermediate support is possible. 90 meter. You cannot even believe this, but 90 meter clear span is possible with steel buildings. But in concrete. You know, uh, it has to be narrow and in, the, in order to make it work. In, in, and in terms of height, again, steel can be, you know, as tall as possible. You can go like six, seven, eight, build, eight story buildings or 10 floor building easily with steel. While in concrete, it is, again, you know, it, it all depends upon the, uh, the overall area of the concrete. As it um, exceeds the allowable or the, um, the conventional sizes, it is going to be more expensive. I'm not saying that it is not feasible or possible, but I'm just saying, I'm just comparing in terms of cost and efficiency and suitability and uh, changes in structure. Uh, say for example, okay, uh, um, a client has constructed a building. So after a span of uh, five years, um, he would like to expand the building. Okay, I would like to make a uh, change in the structure and I want to introduce, uh, um, um, say for example, if you're still factory, I need to introduce one more line to the factory how do I change it? In concrete, it's very difficult because once the concrete has casted and what, once the building sets, sets in, it's very difficult to change. In steel, it's easy easy. It's walk in the park. What you have to do is, you know, change or change the frame where you're going to expand the structure from. You know, either it has to be, it doesn't matter whether you design the building for the future expansion or not. If it is designed, well and good, you can just easily continue the building. If it is not, take out the lost frame and add a new frame to the same foundations and continue the steel building from. So it's very easy. In terms of fire resistance, this is one of the major limitations with fire with which which uh, with with, with uh, pre-engineered steel buildings, the fire resistance. If you could, if you, I um, I'm sure most of uh, you have people have visited the supermarkets, uh, restaurants, and malls, where most of the malls have been constructed in steel. And everything have been encased in such a way that the entire skeleton of this uh, skill, uh, steel is not visible from outside. What they do is, you know, um, in addition to the top coating, which which the painting system, they will apply the coating at side, which is for the fireproofing, and they will encase the uh, the steel 
with concrete or some light uh, weight partition works in such a way that from an outside point of view, this building will not look like a steel building. This like more look like a conventional concrete building. I'm going to show some pictures later. So you can see it for yourself, whether that is a steel building or concrete building. So uh, even though fire resistance is one of the major drawback with steel, again, you have like a lot of fireproof paints, which you can apply at site in order to protect the building from fire, but still uh, concrete lays their upper hand when it comes to fire resistance. And regarding applications, why steel is primarily used in the industrial and commercial um, buildings, as, as many of you know, and concrete are widely used in the houses, villas, buildings, and residential buildings, more like a personal kind of buildings. Okay, so why PEB? Why, why should I go with PEB? I have conventional con uh, steel buildings, so why should I go with PEB? What advantage should I gain from PEB? So in the right, um, hand picture of this uh, right hand side of this particular picture you could see the conventional steel building conventional steel building is nothing it is like a ready-made section ready-made sections are ipa 200 ub uh, 252 those are sections are readily available which are directly procured from the mills so it is like a ready-made i section so what you do is design a building okay uh, suppose uh, i have designed a building and i have a requirement of like I need to use uh, 400 mm thick sections as per the design. And I check the market and I don't have 400 mm thick, uh, thick section. I have only 500 mm thick section. But you, you don't have any choice but to go with the 500 mm thick section. Maybe you have 350 mm deep section, but you cannot use the 350 mm section because it is much less than what it is required in design. So, you, But you have no option to go with the, the higher one, which is at 500 mm sections. So you don't have any option in customizing the building. The left hand side of this particular picture, this is called as a PEB building. As you could see, all the members are tapered at the recovered location. So where it is tapered and how it is tapered, what is the concept beneath this tapering, we will uh, see in more in detail in the coming pictures, okay? So the left hand side of the drawing is called as the pre-engineered buildings and uh, the right side of the uh, picture is called the conventional steel buildings. Uh, please pay attention to the uh, purlins at the top. If you see um, uh, in detail, the top side of the um, conventional steel building, you can see C section, C profiles. Whereas on the left side of the PEB building, you can see Z sections, not C sections, okay? Please notice width of the columns and rafters here. Okay, now uh, let's compare the um, hot old building in terms of conventional steel utilization, straight members designed for the maximum internal stress. This is a typical frame. This is the loading diagram after the loadings are applied, like roof live load, dead loads, and all applicable loads which are um, for this building. So as you could see, the bending moment is more at the fixed bed connection and bending moment is uh, nil or next to zero at the pin-based connection. So bottom portion is pinned and the, the connection between the rafter and the column is fixed base connection. Again, the, 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 the rich portion where the two rafters, uh, rafters are getting joined together, those are called as um, uh, rich portion. Again, this is the uh, fixed connection. So it is like a symmetrical portion on the other side. So this is like irrespective of the um, presence of stress, the distribution of sections are quite uniform from the top to the bottom. It means you are not limiting out the, the member sizes or thickness wherever the stresses are less, okay? But you are giving a uniform section. This is the possible, this is the typical uh, frame of your hot wall section. So let's see how PEB performs here for the same one. Look at the shaded areas. This is where, you know, the extra section sizes are being put in. Means these portions can be easily trimmed out. Look at this uh, PEB section. As you could see, wherever the bending moments are zero or less, the depth of the sections are reduced. Means you are customizing the building, you are designing the building and fabricating the building exactly for the design or wherever the bending moments are required and where, where not the bending moments are needed. So the, the, as you could see, the, wherever the fixed bases are coming and the bending moments is obviously which are higher, 
you can experience a, you know a different or a bigger size of the uh, web sections but as, as it progresses towards the middle section where the bending moments are less the section size are made thinner means you can save lots and lots of steel here so which will obviously save the tonnage price and then the time and the quality as well as the erection means you can easily uh, do the insulation and the most important thing the substructure this is the foundation because you are making the structure as light as possible so which is obviously going to help your substructure so this is called a typical pb frame so the the intermediate the two rafters are joined together by splices as i explained to you before so these are called again z sections which are called as um, secondary members as i explained to you before in hot wall members you will be using the the conventional c sections again it is not a uh, customized section but whereas and it the for not to connect the two c section is always difficult but look at the second picture the the two z sections can be easily merged together where you call it sir, a lapping sir gautam sir sorry for interruption Yeah. Uh, so one of the participant from uh, one of the participant name uh, Dhanajain kindly stop presenting. So it's interrupt the people who are listening. So you can carry on. So uh, some of the people say mentioned uh, your screen is not visible. Okay. Is it clear now? Actually. uh maybe let me uh just you know um uh, cancel it and rejoin again okay yeah yeah better sir better sir thank you that's it sir hariharan sir yeah tell me sir sir it is not required see uh, they have to pin in the presenter uh, yes sir they can pin it so that they can see the presentation okay sir okay sir it is even for some people it may be visible So okay, sir, okay, sir. Yeah, in the presentation, Ruby, I have put a message there. Okay, people can. Yes, yeah, sir. I, I noticed, sir. Noticed, yeah. sir. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. So, okay. So, what do you gain with PEB? First is one-stop solution. Means you you uh, you procure you can able to procure the entire lot of steel building or materials from your steel building from one single stop solution. So it is like one source for the invest, one source for the building, and it is like low initial investment. So all you have to do is you know um, uh, give the design and the particular the material cost to the supplier, and he will give you the the drawings, the design as well as the material. So it is like low initial investment. You don't have to spend awful lot of money for your PEB building. Second one is the architectural flexibility. Means with PEB you can control the architectural uh, features of a building without compromising the um, the look of the building. Means you can still able to get what you need from the building, but of course you have to do a little bit of tweaking in design. But it is quite possible. It's it's not like it it doesn't look like it's an industrial building. I will uh, show some pictures later um, explaining about this architectural flexibility and faster delivery. so uh, like i was telling the entire design can be completed within entire design as well as fabrication and the supply can be finished in a span of 6 weeks and the erection like i was saying like 10 to 15 days it can be easily done so faster delivery occupancy larger clear span options so whenever uh, you need a large clear spans for example hangar building where you need to park the aircraft emirates fly to buy all those aircraft which is called hangars they always go with the pb building so large clear space options and future expansion uh, like i explained to you earlier low maintenance so when you when you put up the building so this building will long last for minimum of 20 to 30 years and of course you have to do the regular maintenance you know go to the top of the building remove the residues and dust which are accumulated at the top of the building and this uh, maintenance you can do like twice in a year and uh, so again low maintenance are required not like you have to maintain this whole building every month or every two months so it is quite easy so quick turn key construction so it is like the combination of uh, civil works and steel are quite uh, um easy and low so it can easily finish up the whole building in no time and energy efficient you can all easily you know remove the structure and you can put it in in a whole different scenario and in whole different site so it is quite efficient so there are like not like recyclable material steel is completely recyclable 
so comparison of general criteria so this is like a quite a, a quite comparison between the pv building structural steel building and uh, reinforced concrete building which are oxc so um, this is this is what we have gone through in the previous slides so it is just a general comparison like in terms of design architectural flexibility quality control traceability delivery modification future expansion efficiency all these things so all these all these things are quite easy in steel as you could see easy in steel, easy in pb steel and uh, um so this is the comparison and this is like a cost comparison again i was trying to uh, show you earlier so pbs are quite light like 20 to 30 percent cheaper and um, you are going to uh, experience uh, awful lot of cost reductions because of tap exceptions and use of lightweight uh, secondary members of the roof and walls and the predicted delivery you can easily rely on the delivery time and easy for the delivery and as well as the logistical requirements so uh, let's this is a comparison it can be easily supplied within a span of six weeks while for the conventional steel building you have to wait for a minimum of 25 to uh, 30 weeks for the delivery and uh, you have to rely on different suppliers for the conventional steel building but in see it's a one stop solution so it's it's all completely like uh, easy and quite straightforward when it comes to PEB building so what are the design codes used in the PEB so every candy has their own uh, steel design and steel concept and uh, acceptable codal norms. When it comes to India, they, they rely on Indian standards, which are primarily extracted from the British standards. So uh, these, these standards are widely used, depends upon the, the country and project requirements. So uh, American codes are widely accepted. So EASC, EAISA, AWS, this is for the building code, which is um, used for the fabrication of the work. Metal building systems is another uh, building uh, code. IBC, International Building Code, this is another design code. So all the designs are being done based on the international code norms. So it is not like you have your own empirical formulas, you have their own standard. So you, are, you completely rely on the code, codal norms, like deflections, the stresses, everything you're following as, as per the code norms. So what are the softwares used in the PEB? MBS is one of the uh, primary uh, softwares, which is used for the uh, design of PEB. AutoCAD is used for the uh, draftsman, in order to express the buildings. And uh, Stratpro is another design software. And uh, Tecla model. So uh, Tecla will be used in the part of detailing. Detailing is uh, something um, in PEB called as a second part of the design. So once the design is finished and uh, frozen, this building will be uh, detailed in a 3D model where each and every component of the connections and the members, everything will be detailed in the model. So chances of errors and um, you know, modifications are quite um, not possible or not possible, like reduced in the uh, Tecla structures. So once this 3D model is finished, this will be directly fitted to the machines in the shop. So everything is automated. So machines will automatically recognize the files and it will, it will stop cutting the plates according to the, the design from the Tecla model. So this is like, a um, let's uh, dive in and uh, see, you know, in more practical approach, let's uh, approach this build, uh, PEB building, like how we do in day-to-day in -day, uh, life. So this is like a typical uh, plan of a PEB building. So it is, has been divided into different bays. The first one is a six meter, seven meter, uh, eight meter. It depends upon the, the project requirement and client requirement. So this is called as a length and the transfer direction is called as a width. So this is the typical frame of your PEB rafters. So as you know, the primary uh, members are columns and the rafters and the, the, the top members are called as purlings, which are spaced about 1.5 meter and uh, the um, Secondary members, which are also used at the wall, is called girds, and the sheeting will be connected to the purlings at the top as well as at the wall. So this is the 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 eave height is called as something called as a height of the building, and the uh, more as you progress towards the rich portion, the slope advances, and those portion is called as rich. And uh, FFL is something like finished floor level for a building. So this is this is the typical uh, building width of a PEB building. So this is where uh, this is where your design is totally done. Once you design the frame, design the uh, primary and secondary members, uh, um, your building is PB building is completed. 
So these are the primary aspect of our design concept of a pre-B building. So let's talk about a different framing systems. So this is like a more like a clear span option where I don't want to have any intermediate columns. Maybe I'm storing like a lot of um, materials in the inside the building where it will obstruct the movements. So uh, the client will say, I don't need any any columns. So obviously we'll go for the clear span option, but you can also go with the MS1, which is which an introduction of one more column in the middle, which will help to you know reduce the loads on the structure by introducing one more column. It's it's more like you know uh, you have a weight of 150 kg and it's being lifted by two persons. What happens when you add one more person to join in? The entire load will be segregated and it will be distributed equally to the three persons, which will obviously helps to carry out the structure much easier. So these are like different options of frames available with the PEB. So with PEB, it's not like uh, one monopoly. You have like so many options available, so many framing systems available. So this is like a roof system where you can place the raft. Gautam on. sir. Yeah. Got. Gautam, Gautam sir, sorry for interruption. Uh, I think the people who are uh, uh, listening the program through laptop, they are not facing issue. The people who are uh, having uh, attending through mobile, they are facing issue. If you don't mind, okay. kindly rejoin this, sir. Yeah. Sure, sure. Only sure. presenting, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's okay. Thank you. It's okay. Okay. So uh, the first is called roof system where you um, um, support the rafter on a concrete building. Suppose you, you have like concrete columns and I don't want to put concrete uh, roof for a span of like uh, 20 hundred square meters. So you can put your rafter on top of it, put the cladding on top, finish. So your, your building is ready. Means like you have so many options available to mix up. Like you can still able to combine the concrete with steel buildings. So this is one of the uh, many options available, which is called as roof system and multi gable option you have like two different spans available and mono slope single slope option so it's all depends on the uh, the um, you know the site scenario where you don't have much space available so you can go with the mono slope, mono slope option and uh, this is like a lean to option you are going to expand it uh, in the future so you can use it as a lean to structure and um, okay how do you put a crane inside the steel building so there, there is like so many of so many people are wondering how how do I put the crane? How do I ensure that the crane can easily run inside the building? So this is like a, as usual, this is a typical crane. So how the crane will be supported? You have a crane bracket again. This is a steel bracket attached to the part of the columns, and on top of the column there will be steel beam which will be bolted connection bolted to bolted connected to the bottom of the uh, bracket, and uh, on top of that uh, bracket the steel beam will be laid out on top of that there will be a rail so on top of the rail the crane bridge well will run you know through the length of the building i will um, show you one practical photo to you so this is one of the uh, project which we have executed lately so uh, like uh, i have shown in the earlier picture this is this is your uh, sorry so this is your crane beam so uh, this has been uh, assembled or uh, put together on top of the crane bracket and which will be running throughout the length of the building. So on top of it, the cranes will run. The crane capacity depends upon the end use of the building. It's, it's, if it's a big factory, you have 10, 10, uh, 20 metric ton, 30 metric ton. So according to the capacity of the crane, so this uh, crane beam will be designed. Okay, mezzanine. So mezzanine, uh, what do you mean by mezzanine? Mezzanine is nothing but an extra flow inside the steel building. It is not um, uh, always um, say that uh, you cannot say that the PEB just one floor option is available. You cannot go with multi multi floor options. No, you have like so many options of putting multi floor mezzanine in a PEB building. So a mezzanine is called as a floor, an additional floor in a building. How do you put up the mezzanine floor? It's it's same as the concept is same. Uh, please introduce your additional columns additional beams to support the mezzanine and put a decking panel. What do you mean by decking panel? A decking panel is nothing but, it's, it's the profile is same as per the, the roof panel. Once the primary members are being assembled and installed in the structure, the deck panel will be installed on top of the beam. This is nothing but a temporary uh, shuttering work in order to 
um, uh, hold of the concrete until it gets completely sets out. So once the concrete is sets out, you can easily remove the deck panel. But most people, you know, they leave the deck as it is. Okay. So let let me uh, explain to you more about this thing. So as you could see in the picture, this uh, transverse direction is is called as main mezzanine beam, uh, which is supported by in the intermediate uh, uh, mezzanine column. In between the mezzanine beam, uh, you you can see certain eye uh, section. Those are called as joists, which are called as secondary support members. On top of that, the deck panel will be laid. On top of that, you will be pouring the concrete. Okay. So these are the uh, beams which are running uh, through the length of the building, and these are the joist connections. And um, so these are like typical features, a typical uh, picture of uh, mezzanine beams. So these are the beams and secondary members. And the first picture, you can see the deck panels. Okay, so this is the uh, latest uh, one of the project pictures which we are executing now. So the mezzanine is finished and deck panels are being laid out. And handrails and different requirements on the building. This is an industrial building, so handrails are being put at the end of the mezzanine to prevent people from you know falling out. This is a multi-floor mezzanine option. So um, again, this is like a complete steel building with PEB. You have uh, mezzanine panels at each floor. This is like a G plus four or five. So this is like entire skeleton before the finish of the building. This is another multi multi floor uh, mezzanine one. So um, on top of the panel, the reinforcement will be uh, laid out in it with a minimum space with minimum diameter. You don't have to put like holes and lot of reinforcement box, uh, you know, just like the uh, concrete slabs. It's much easy. So once the reinforcement box are laid out, just pour the concrete. The concrete are being poured. So allow for the uh, concrete to set out. And uh, on top of that, you can put your tiles or anything according to the uh, um, apartment or any end use of the building. So these are the blocks. So outside, you can cover the block, uh, steel building with blocks. So this is after, this picture is taken after the concrete uh, sets out. So this is the finish of the steel building. So most like about, uh, you know, seven out of 10 people will say this is, this is a concrete building. Nobody would say this is a steel building. So this is the beauty of steel building. You can easily, you know, co uh, uh, compromise. And you don't have to compromise the end use of the architectural features of the building, but still you can go with the uh, PEB because it's quite cheap and it is very cheap, minimum like 30 to 40 percent cheap than the concrete building. So you have various options available. You can cover the slope with, uh, with, with rising the parapet. And uh, you can also go with the flat roof building, which I shown you in the earlier picture, like a, um, uh, by means of concrete, or put the cladding at the top and cover with outside with rising the, the wall portions. So these are like various um, applications of PEB. Like industry, you can use in industries, factories, workshop, warehouses, cold stores, etc and commercial activities, showrooms, distribution centers, office, labor camps. And uh, recently, you know, we can, um, during this emergency period, during like uh, the pandemic situation, where, you know, mass houses or mass camps have to be generated with, within like few uh, days, you can easily achieve this with the buildings. You, you cannot go with regular conventional buildings because it's always going to take time. And uh, time is something which you cannot afford to lose. So this is where, you know, PBs are, um, quite easy to handle and easily uh, can be used in applications wise. So these are like different projects, uh, factories and warehouses, like end use of the uh, PEB building. So warehouses. So the first one you can see a diamond shaped building. Still you can achieve the uh, um, architectural features without compromising it. So these are like distribution centers aircraft hangars. So this is like a span of about uh, 40 or 60 meters. So this is like a creation facilities, community centers, uh, show, uh, showrooms, uh, mosques. So uh, uh, remember this picture? So this, the first picture is the finished uh, uh, building, finished picture which is taken once the complete building has been finished. So again, you know, from outside perspective, it will look like a concrete building, but it is not, it is steel building. So this is a multi-story car parking and malls, hypermarkets. It's a special project. It's like uh, the bottom one is for the Dubai Metro. Uh, the first one is for, uh, I think it's an office from office come warehouses. 
and showrooms. So the last, uh, the right hand bottom uh, corner of the picture is about 60 meter clear span building. So these are cement factories, exhibition centers, office buildings. Okay, so let's uh, uh, explain it to you. Let me uh, just open uh, a Tecla model and I will explain to you more in detail about how the Tecla model works and how do you generate the building. It's a big fail, so it's, it's a taking a bit of while, it's a bit of time. Okay, so th these building is about a uh, 25 meter tall building. Okay, this is uh, used for shipyard where you um, mock your ship to maintain um, it, that may, maybe it will be majority it will be used at the uh, docks to maintain the ships so which is why uh, the building structure is quite tall let me just show it around to like uh, to show you you know how the uh, members look like and how tall is this building so as you could see this is about 20 meter tall um, you cannot measure it down, so I'm just saying it. So uh, the base of the column is about fixed base. So uh, it, it's like a truss element. Since the client asked for the pin base connection, he said, I don't want the fixed base connection. So we have gone with the pin base connection, which is why the it has been designed as a truss. So everything has been bolted together. I mean, it's a bolted connection. So you supply the building, as a loose piece and it will be all connected together and integrated together by means of bolts and it is a similar site. So these are the um, purlins which I was telling you about, the secondary members, which is at the wall. So these are the distressed members are the primary members, rafters, and these are the columns. So these are the, the wall members. So these are the bracings which will be used to transfer the forces from the roof to the wall. So this is like a quite straightforward building, except that this is quite tall, but this is a much more simpler building. So uh, if you, uh, we can also refer to another uh, uh, building, which is quite different from the uh, one which we have uh, just seen. taking a lot of time. So let's uh, directly go to the uh, pictures which have been executed at site for the same project. Okay, I'm going to show you the step-by-step uh, -step installation pictures of the building which I have uh, shown in the, uh, the recent Tecla model. So uh, the materials reach the site in containers. So they started unloading the materials. So this is like uh, depends upon where they are going to uh, start the building from. Like you have like one end of the building to start the installation from. So they are assembling the material and taking you to one end of the building to start the installation. And they are lifting the materials with by cranes. So, and they are segregating the materials. So segregation is going on. So first of all, this is where, you know, they are putting up the anchor bolts. So foundation has been built and the anchor bolts are placed in. So they are, they are placing the columns at the bottom and they're securing to the ground by.
సార్ గౌతమ్ సార్ వి కాంట్ హియర్ యువర్ వాయిస్ గౌతమ్ సార్ సో క్యాన్ యూ హియర్ మీ గౌతమ్ సార్ హలో హలో గౌతమ్ సార్ కెన్ యూ హియర్ మీ యా 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 కెన్ హియర్ ఇట్ సో ఇట్ ఆల్ ద నెట్వర్క్ హస్ బీన్ లాస్ట్ యా యా యు కెన్ కీప్ యు కెన్ కీప్ ప్రెజెంట్ ఇన్ సార్ థాంక్యూ యా ఓకే so uh, that the one side of the cladding has been finished in one side so that uh, the other side you are, you can see you know the foundations are being uh, cast in so this is the, uh, the other building which i was trying to show you uh, show you in the other tecla model yeah and then uh, two pictures mm. so the cladding work has been um, implemented at the top and uh, the cranes are being installed so the cladding are uh, the um, works uh, they are securing the cladding to the top to the purlins by uh, bolts which are called as fasteners the building is almost like 80% is completed just few uh, works are pending as you could see the picture has been dated to like 2 months before it's almost completed now okay so um now i'll just like to show you uh, some video regarding the uh, intro about our company profile and it will it will also have some video about the uh, factory procedures i will explain to you once the video has been completed i will let you finish the video i will let you finish watching the video first progress innovation development the world is forging ahead at an unprecedented pace with shrinking boundaries and increasing trade cost effective customer centric solutions are the cornerstones that make the difference in the world today Mimar building systems making the difference Established in 1997, Mimar Building Systems is a subsidiary of Emar Industries and Investments. Located in the United Arab Emirates, Mimar Building Systems is one of the largest manufacturers of pre-engineered steel buildings and sandwich panels in the world. 
with a total area of over 160,000 square meters, including this almost half a kilometer long factory, MBS is the answer to the increasing global demand for pre-engineered steel buildings. These pre-engineered steel buildings not only increase the engineering accuracy, but also save significant costs and time by consolidating the whole structure as a single building system. This state-of-the-art production facility has a monthly production capacity of 8,000 metric tons of steel buildings and 150,000 square meters of sandwich panels. More than 35,000 buildings delivered to over 70 countries in the GCC, Middle East, Central Asia, Africa, Central America, and Indo-Pacific stand testimony to our company's reputation as a reliable partner. Our leadership in the market is a result of continuously updating and improving our internal functions and capabilities. Accredited by well-known reputable third-party auditors, we are also one of the first PEB manufacturers in the region to attain the EN 1090 CE certification. MBS adheres to the latest American design codes and standards to ensure the safe, efficient and accurate manufacture and rapid error-free erection process. We can also adhere to various other codes depending on the requirements of our customers. Staffed by a team of top-notch experienced professionals, the pre-engineered building process starts here in the engineering department. Accomplished professionals with the aid of advanced integrated software systems achieve accuracy as well as reduced cost and time. A critical function in the MBS process is quality control, which starts at the early stages with the raw materials, tested for physical and chemical properties before being routed to the factory. These steel coils contribute to cost savings for the customer. The company's investment in coil cut-to-length technology reduces waste while speeding up the production process, resulting in faster delivery times. These cut sheets are eventually transformed into the primary members that make up the structural frame of the building system. State-of-the-art automated submerged arc welding machines ensures high-quality welds. All welders are qualified in accordance with the American Welding Society and EN standards and undergo strict proficiency tests every six months to retain their certifications. The advantages of a pre-engineered building system include reduced costs and time savings, as well as the fact that the whole building is treated as a single system, designed and manufactured under controlled conditions that deliver a high degree of accuracy and efficiency. Every part that passes through the manufacturing facility is engraved with a unique serial number for accurate identification and traceability. MBS maintains a strict quality control procedure at every workstation throughout the manufacturing process. All components are subjected to a series of quality control inspections. Once the components are approved and tagged by the quality control supervisor, they undergo a thorough cleaning process called blasting in our fully automated shot blasting line. This is followed by painting, as per the customer's requirement, in our fully automated painting lines. Stringent quality control tests are performed in accordance with international standards. The complete building components are held at the staging area for dispatch, either by sea or over land. Supplementing the PEB manufacturing unit is MBS's state-of-the-art sandwich panel production facility. MBS produces sandwich panels in various thicknesses with excellent slip joint connections for structural strength and weather tightness. MBS also offers single panels in various profiles to cater to the customer's requirements. 
Automated lines ensure high quality, accuracy, and increase the production output that further adds to the customer's advantage. Speed of delivery is one of the cornerstones of the MBS production process. Different material of various thicknesses can be cold rolled in this roll former to produce profiles which are cut to the desired lengths. The continuous sandwich panel line seen here is capable of producing PUR and PIR foam sandwiched by metal or flexible facings. Some popular applications include industrial and commercial buildings, as well as the food supply sector for their cold storage requirements. On-site testing laboratories ensure that all components meet the required specifications. The panels are now ready to go. MBS delivers PEBs to over 70 countries around the world, with the majority of consignments going in containers by sea. MBS engineers have developed innovative designs that allow PEB components to be loaded into containers using skids. Unloading at location is equally easy too. All components and parts are tagged and clearly marked for easy sorting and erection using only high strength bolts. No cutting, welding, or drilling is needed at the site. On-site assistance anywhere in the world is also available from our in-house erection experts. That is the biggest advantage of PEBs from Mimar Building Systems. Total reliability coupled with speed of erection and significant cost savings both with respect to time and material. It makes all the difference. Neymar Building Systems. Making the difference. Okay, uh, we come to the uh, end of the uh, session. So I'm happy to answer any questions uh, you have regarding the uh, presentations or regarding the subjects which we have discussed so far. So some of the people are posted a question in chat box. Sir. Uh, okay. One guy for, uh, named uh, Samuel James, he asked Mr. Okay. Gautam, can PE be made composite with uh, concrete addition forever greater economy? Of course. See, uh, as I was trying to say, the cheap is you know the, the cheaper option is always go to uh, go you know going with a complete uh, solution from PEB. But you can still go with the you know conventional uh, steel plus concrete um, option, such as like like I was saying uh, to you earlier, when you add a mezzanine inside the building and you are putting um, a steel mezzanine with decks on top of it, and you are adding the um, reinforcements, and on top of it, you are pouring the concrete, you can also add a shear studs, which will act as a composite design between the steel and the concrete. For apartment buildings and all, for example, you are going to uh, construct a multi floor apartment buildings, uh, where you can put the in inside the coke structure in concrete, and you can connect the steel mezzanine to the concrete beams, which is present at the perimeter side of the coat, which will act as a composite design for the steel as well as for the concrete. Yes, another question, sir. Uh, sir, what is your opinion on Bentley Pro Steel? Is it good as Tecla? Uh, is the question regarding Bentley Stack Pro? I think so, sir. Stackway is one of the uh, you know primarily used design softwares in PEB, 
So in order to become a, a you know a structural steel designer, you need to get familiarized with the design software, design codes and standards, as well as how to uh, apply this code and standards in the uh, softwares. All StarPro softwares are uh, uh, you know comes in built um, coded standards. You just have to apply it properly. You have to study or familiarize yourself and apply the loads and uh, standards according to the requirements of the project. and uh, yeah but you have to be uh, get you have to get familiar with familiar with the uh, concepts of codes as well as stat pro so another question from aravind kumar uh, yeah. which is software do we use for uh, mezzanine flooring same software as stat pro it's see with stat pro you can design the entire building with connections with multi floor mezzanine cranes everything yeah So another it, question it, it, from uh, Rahul Ramesh, sir, yeah. is it necessary to give reinforcement for the roof while laying concrete in the PEB structure? See, whenever you have a mezzanine floor, see you have like different options of mezzanine floor. Some cases, suppose you are going to use a mezzanine floor for offices, you have to pour the concrete. Sometimes it will be used for storage of materials. At the time, you can use grating such checkered plates. You don't have to pour the concrete. So at this look at this uh, uh, for checkered plates and gratings, you don't need any reinforcement. But for concrete, you cannot just pour the concrete and wait for the uh, curing, and then you know in, and and uh, hope for hope that concrete will be uh, good in strength. You have to put some minimum reinforcement whenever you pour the concrete in. But you know it doesn't have to be more than like 150 mm. If you have like a standard office, the thickness can be as low as 100 mm. You don't have to go with like uh, a diameter of the reinforcement bog like 40 mm or 15 mm. It is just a minimum strength in order to uh, in order for the concrete to work. That's it. Yes. Uh, one more. Uh, so wait a minute, sir. Yeah. So one another guy from uh, what has been asked. Gautam sir, is MBS handling any projects in India currently? We have supplied uh, projects in, uh, in India before, but India's market is quite saturated. It means you have like lots and lots of companies in India, which is a good thing for young engineers like you. Like you have like whole some lot of opportunities available at your disposal because of so many companies. Even in Tamil Nadu, there are like so many companies available. so where you can go and learn you know some valuable experience so the market in india is quite saturated and you have like lots of projects there you can even you know see this cladding sheet at every uh, villages in in most of the shops tata blue scopes everest and all so the market in pb is quite saturated so um you have like so many competitors in india so which is why we we uh, don't concentrate in india we have other markets to cover like as africa and and other gcc countries other parts of the world sir another question uh, hmm. minimum floor area for mezzanine floor unit is there any no it, it, see it is it is all depends upon your requirement suppose i i am my build my land size is just in you know, a 200 square meter and i need g plus 5 you can still able to achieve it there is nothing like a minimum size for the building it all depends upon the project requirement and uh, you are um, end use of the building you can you can do anything you want you can achieve anything you want with the uh, pb there is no like no standard sizes yes sir one of the uh, one more question from uh, rahul ramesh sir in one of the picture you shared i saw a slab reinforced being given mm -hmm. before laying concrete on roofs my mm -hmm. question is is it necessary to, to give a slab reinforcement for a pb structure Yeah, it is necessary. Or is it for, just to give to arrest the cracks? Yeah, just just for it is just for the sake of the concrete. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't do anything with the, uh, you know, uh, steel structure. The the load is always yes. going to be transferred from the steel beams to the steel columns or the foundation. Please note that the concrete doesn't act as a Um, um, structural member in this particular mezzanine. The steel joists and steel beams are the ma main primary supporting members. The reinforcement are being laid just for the sake of the concrete, just for the strength of the concrete. It doesn't seem to do anything with the uh, mezzanine loads. Primarily uh, because it will be transferred from mezzanine joists to beams and then to the columns to the foundation. Yes. Another question from Prem Kumar. As is said, there is a minimum cost we can construct it. 
can you tell me how much less than when compared to the concrete building or normal steel building see uh, um, i was you know we have uh, com- compared so many buildings like uh, there are always going to be you know a comparison between steel and concrete building from our experience steel cost 30 to 40 percent cheaper than the conventional concrete building i'm just talking about the cost you have also have to include the time factor which also costs you the money yeah thank you sir uh, another question from akil okuri which software is better to learn first uh, whether it is soft uh, statro or etaps or tecla structure she tecla is more like a detailing part if you want to if you aspect to be a structural steel designer i urge you to just get familiarize yourself with the steel design codes first you you should learn what is peb what are the components associated with the peb what is needed for the peb then once you once you you know get to know about this components of peb then start learning the design codes and design standards and then you know uh, these once you learn the design codes and standards start learning how to apply this uh, design code standards in the start pro design uh and and it it's better if you also learn the autocad but detailing tecla i don't need it is necessary because for engineers uh, it is it is primarily used for detailing part it does, it is nothing to do with the design if if you learn detailing that's that's better actually it will come handy as an added experience to your profile it will weigh some weight to your profile but it is not mandatory yes sir another question uh, what is the protection coat used for structural steel according to the climate changes for example uh, uh, the case study which i was uh, shown which i have shown you in the pictures and the tecla model it was at the sea port it is at the sea okay it was in africa and it is at the sea port where you experience like so many corrosions because of the you know salty climate so how we have protected the steel against the corrosion we have galvanized the steel it is it is not a painting it the steel are being immersed in a molten zinc and galvanized to 85 micron thickness which will act as a protection resistance a corrosion resistance against the salty corrosive environment or if you don't want to galvanize the whole structure you can also go with some a uh, paint system like a epoxy paint system primer and finish coat which will also works against works better against the corrosion uh, corrosive environment uh, uh, locations yes sir another another question from uh, vijay you yes. are very true about difference between tecla and statro software because many people are thinking like tecla is a design software uh, he just thank for the his your clarification yeah see uh, initially i joined uh, as as a, as a starter you know i joined as a design and estimation engineer and uh, what i learned is about the uh, codes standards and i learned about the mbs software and start pro so far i don't know anything about the tecla model i know how it works i know something about tecla but it is not mandatory for a designer most designers are like 90% of the designer doesn't get to know about the uh, tecla model because for them design analysis is you know much more mandatory and there are like so many uh, options available and there are so many things to learn in design it's like it's learning is a never ending curve you're always going to learn until the you know end so it's it's like a never ending process so it's like hold some lot of things available uh, uh, out in the ocean so you just learning every day you know every single drop of it but it is a never ending ocean so design is completely different so i always ask you to learn the design concept and tecla is not mandatory yeah so will you please switch on your uh, video camera yeah sorry yeah yeah uh, sir he, is there any other question from the audience you can unmute your mic and uh, you can uh, you can ask sir, harish sir harish uh, rao hey. yeah, yeah tell me sir uh, regarding this anchor bolt lateral strength and the earthquake loading uh, so whether the strength is sufficient because in 1995 in japan i think there was a heavy structural damage with the ss okay. so what about the lateral strength of the anchor bolts and their uh, lateral loading like earthquake loading see see we we designed the structure based on the uh, geographical locations depends upon the you know the, the location of the project and uh, depends upon the, the seismic uh, category where the particular uh, you know the land is or geographical uh, project is located based on it categorically divided into zone 1 2 3 4 from like relatively uh, small to high 
So the, the loads are not directly uh, transferred to the anchor bolts. It is just made of securing the structure. So the, uh, the, the, the crack of seismic loads are always going to be horizontal loads. Yeah. So it will, it will be transferred to so the bracings directly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It will be directly, directly transferred to the bracings and then directly to the foundation. But the anchor bolts will not be taking the crack welds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm not a designer, actually. I'm kind of more like a, a sales engineer, but I'm happy mm -hmm. to assist you. Or if you need more clarifications, you can email me. I will get clarity from our uh, design department and I'm like, able to help you with that. Because uh, I uh, think uh, maybe based on, uh, as you said, the seismic zone severity and all, uh, probably yes. anchor bolt uh, sizes and all the shape and may vary. I'm not sure. I don't know exactly. <laughs> That's why I asked. This, uh, yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, see that the, you have diameter from 16 mm till 36 mm dia. Okay. It all depends upon the span of the building and how tall yeah. the building is. Okay, and also maybe and, the intense of lateral loading. If it is a zone C, variety, accordingly. Yeah. 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 zone C, zone D, and you have like full height block wall in sub cladding, where there are like absence of brace points, you will end up in more thing like more shear, more uh, in, uh, more uh, you know forces. Then in that case, you have to go for the um, uh, more sizes in the anchor board. Or another option is to, go, is to change the overall base connection to be fixed instead of pin base connection, like moment mm -hmm. connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. No problem. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Sir, any other question from the audience? You can ask. You can ask. Sir, uh, for corrosion prevention, does any yeah. uh, prevention mechanism like uh, sacrificial anodes are uh, provided in the no, not sacrificial anodes. So what happens is like, how do you, yeah, yeah. How do you um, ensure the um, structural protection of steel from the corrosive materials? See, first of all, we clean the um, materials by blasting. What happens is once the steel is um, fabricated, it will be, you know, sent to a blasting machine where minute balls, steel balls will be thrown against the steel. So all the residues and small, uh, you know, the dust, everything will be clean. So it will, it will, it will come out as a completely fresh steel members. Once the residues are clean, it will be sent to the automatic painting process machine, where the the coating will be automatically applied. So that uh, uh, depends upon the uh, the location of the project. We will specify the uh, types of paint system. Like some paint system have like two core paint system. In that paint system, you have like top coat 50 microfilm, like primer 50 micron, 100 microns, where the individual you know uh, components of the uh, paints material paint specification will be altered, depends upon the corrosive uh, requirements or location of the project. So it is like we will change the types of paint system, not like anodes, like like you said. It it, it all related to the paint system, but the basic um, steel remains the same. You are not going to change anything with the steel. Uh, actually, I asked a question in the comment box. Uh, does the uh, term uh, PEB refers only uh, structural steel components and not other, not any other prefabricated uh, concrete structures? Uh, so, so we come again. Uh, so does the term PEB refers only structural mm. steel? No, or, uh, it can also add no, 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 no. Structural steel Structural is steel called SSB. SSB. Structural steel buildings. PEB is called pre engineered means pre engineered buildings. Means you are customizing the building for the client requirement. It's like, you know, uh, uh, going to a, yeah, it's like going to a carpenter and asking him to prepare a, a court or, or any furnitures based upon your requirement. It is called PEB. You are pre designing the building and you are fabricating it. Structural steel also you are designing it, but the only thing is you don't have like hold some lot of options available at your disposal to suit the exact requirement. You have like, if you, if your requirement is like 350 mm sections, um, you, you may not get the same sections in the market. You have to go with either 400 or go with 300. With PEB, you can exactly go with your requirement, which is 350. What about composite construction? Uh, is it should yeah, be, I, yeah it, it, it is. For example, you know, one of the major uh, issue with uh, PEB for multi soviet building is the vibration. Sometimes it does vibrate. See, any building will vibrate. 
like steel works steel only works. If, if you see you know if a building works without vibration is not a building it has to work it has to work the Def- deflection has to work only if a deflection happens you are ensuring that loads are getting transferred so sometimes for apartment buildings they will construct the inner part of the uh, apartment building with concrete and they will connect the steel beams and joists to the uh, concrete core from all parts so which will act as a composite design thank you uh, sir uh, <coughs> sir is the uh, do you use coal form steel or light gauge steel uh, in your buildings sir? exactly yes the secondary members are always coal form steel so how the coal form steels are procured we will give the coils means the cold rolled coils we will put it to the machines wag it will be cold rolled to form the ice uh, this is n sections or c sections but the main okay. issue with this cold form sections are it is not be used as a primary supporting or structural members for the building the primary supporting members will always going to be i sections the plates the cold rolled or light gauge steels are not in a strength uh, not strong enough to carry the loads and uh, okay. it is not quite advisable maybe for parking shelters and all maybe you can use the cold rolled steel but uh, not for not as a primary supporting members for the columns rafters uh, okay sir sir and the material uh, that you use for making these sections is it uh, originally cold rolled a uh, cold formed or a cold cold rolled material or hot rolled sheets from which you cut and make the sections yeah yeah like um, in one of the videos i think you have seen some uh, you know um, steel coils right yes sir yes sir so you see as uh, coils as uh, steel uh, see what usually we take the uh, we uh, plates and we'll cut the plates according to the design requirements suppose if i need a flange of 200 mm i will take a, a wider flange and i will cut to the desired section the coil the 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 okay. coils are coming like in different thickness from for example from 4 mm to 8 mm it comes in coils Make, means you can able to cool uh, roll the coils more than 8 mm or 10 mm thickness you cannot you know roll the coils it always comes in plates okay uh, from 4 mm till 8 mm you can uh, you know straighten out the coils you can cut into plates still the concept okay. is same i'm just saying that it is come in coils from 4 mm till 8 mm more than 8 to 10 mm it will come as a plate we will take the plates cut into uh, the sizes as desired by our uh, design then we'll put it together by the automatic machines and then we will form the i sections okay so thank you sir no problem any other question from the audience yeah if there is no question uh, let us wind the session sir i am very much uh, thankful for uh, accepting our invitation so on behalf of uh, department of civil engineering i thank you very much uh, for accepting our invitation and give a valuable lecture the people who have attended uh, the session uh, from many streams like students research scholars as well as uh, faculties uh, i think this is this is a eye opening session apart from the syllabus they are uh, really learn something new apart from the what they are studying from the books and something thank you thank you very much for giving this uh, valuable session so with this yeah. <laughs> thanks for your kind words uh, professor harish in fact it's it's my uh, pleasure to address you all people and to uh, you know to um, share the uh, things which i have learned in all these years frankly to be speaking when i enter the pb industry you know uh, um, it, it's safe to say that i know nothing so until now i, I have learned something and it's always better to you know to share all the informations or all the knowledge which you have gained in your field to the students who are who are uh, you know who you are the, who i was in in that stage about 10 years back i was in that uh, in the asuj and i didn't know anything so of, of course it will be at least uh, if it is of something value to them i would be happy and um, any time if they have any questions they can also email me i'm happy to assist in um, all possible uh, ways and um, if there is anything you also need from me i'm happy to assist you and thanks for this wonderful opportunity and it's uh, really great interacting with you all people thank you so much thank you thank you i communicate you by personal call you can leave the session sir thank you very much thank you thank all thank you thank you thank uh, you thank you thanks for uh, valuable uh, presentation thank you bye